songs be your song. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath, let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. And let our shout be your anthem, your renown. Let it fill the sky, cause we are here for you. We are here for you. Let your word, let your word come move in power. Let what's dead go. here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy. Only you are worthy. God, let your fire are open, nothing here is hidden, you are our one desire, you alone are holy, only you are worthy, God, let your fire fall down, let it fall down, let it fall Church, sing, we welcome. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, we welcome in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, we welcome in this place. So let every heart adore. Let every soul awake, Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. So we welcome you with praise, we welcome you with praise, Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. So let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be sung. We are here for you. We are here for you. Say that one more time. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be sung, cause we are here for you. We are here for you. When 
Scripture encourages us to give thanks in all things. There's a song that used to be sung by Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. It would say, in the good times and in the bad times. The good times praise his name and the bad times do the same. Praise his name. God is great. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's ever-present. And there's not anything about our lives that escapes His attention. And whether we're, it's a time of pleasure or it's a time of pain, we can still call upon the Lord and we can lift and we can magnify His name for our hope is in the Lord, right? He's the one who takes care of us. He nurtures us. He comforts us. He helps us. He makes a way for us. This past week has been an interesting week. Actually, the last several weeks. We have a little board we keep in the office has listed all the different things that are happening in people's lives and whether they're in the hospital or in recovery or things of that nature. And there have been times where the board has been completely full and we're kind of stretching to put other people on there. But I want you to know he's still worthy of your praise still worthy of our praise. We have a couple people who have gone home to be with Jesus. Cleo Jones went home to be with Jesus this morning, and Sue Molinari went home to be with the Lord the end of this last week, and I am so thankful for the promise that they are now fully realizing that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Sure, we sorrow at our loss 
And that's okay. That's right, but we don't sorrow as the world does. Because our hope's in Jesus. We have people who have, in the last couple weeks, had surgeries and been diagnosed with cancer and things of that nature and, and walking down a road. But you know, I have seen God's grace be sufficient for each and every one. And as we have been faithful to call upon the Lord in prayer, He has been there. He's lifted. He's made Himself known. He's brought us through. Roger, come on up here if you would. We, uh, Roger and Jeff and I had a fun encounter this past week. And uh, it's okay if you remain in an attitude of worship. Go ahead and sit down. It's okay. But not the choir. No, I'm kidding. You guys can sit down too. <laughs> so, uh, Roger, we had an opportunity this week to... Uh, to uh, meet with um, a missionary candidate, and um, and I want you to know I did remember the name of the little boy. It's Ezra. <laughs> Ezra. Ezra. So Roger's going to tell you just about something we experienced this past week. So it's the green one. There you go. Thank you. So on Thursday. Uh, Pastor Jeff and myself uh, had an opportunity to sit down with a missionary that's uh, itinerating at this time and headed off here pretty soon. And it was a great meeting. I really appreciated what he had to say. But just as the meeting was uh, kind of winding down, he got a text from his wife reminding him that he needed to get home because um, their little boy, Ezra, um, about 15 months old, I believe, was scheduled for an electrocardiogram because he had a hole in his heart. And they were going to try and decide what they were going to do. They wanted to see, you know, what was going on there. <clears throat> so he was in a hurry to leave. And uh, of course, there was concern. And we, as he left, told him that we would pray. And uh, so we did. After he left, we prayed for safety and guidance and all that and, and healing. And pastor, Thursday afternoon, sent a text to Jeff and I and said that they couldn't find anything, nothing, the hole was gone. <laughs> yeah. And in a conversation that I had with Jeff a little later, <clears throat> you know, we were thinking, wow, this is awesome, this is really great. But as I was talking to Jeff, we kind of came to the conclusion that why were we so surprised because we, you know, we were, obviously. We weren't, I guess, expecting it, you know? But hey, we asked for healing. I'm sure we weren't the only ones praying. I'm sure there were family members and so on and so forth praying. But we should never be surprised at what God is capable of doing. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yes. But so many times we are. So I had to ask myself, this morning, as we're here, do we expect miracles or do we just come? Why are we here? How many would want to see a miracle this morning? So as we go to prayer this morning, we're going to do something a little bit different. And please don't be offended because this is kind of what God laid on my heart. <clears throat> Can't argue with God, right? What I would like to do is, I know that there are people here who have needs. You can't have a crowd this size without people having needs. There's a story in the Bible, I'm sure most of you know it, of the lady who had an issue of blood. 
And, you know, Jesus always had a crowd around him. So this lady knew in her heart that if I can just touch the hem of his garment, he doesn't have to say anything. I don't have to do anything. But all I got to do is just touch the hem of his garment and I'll be healed. She pressed through that crowd. I'm sure she was just on her hands and knees trying to get to Jesus to touch the hem of his garment. And she did. She got there. Now, she had to be weak. She had to be. She was bleeding. But she pressed in there, and she touched the hem of his garment. And immediately, she was healed. <laughs> So, with that being said, I know that there are people in here who have a need. And if you'll just reach out, if you believe that all you have to do is touch the hem of his garment, you'll be healed. Now, to me, that says you are 100% convinced that God can touch you. And if you have a need this morning, glad you're seated because this makes my job a little easier. If you have a need this morning and you are 100% convinced that God can touch you and meet that need this morning, would you stand up? 100%. Okay. So you who have that need and are 100% convinced that God is going to meet that need today, would you come down front? Now, don't forget, you said that in your heart, you are 100% convinced that God's going to meet your need. Okay? Now, this is the category that I fit into, uh, unfortunately, a lot of the times. And that is, there's another story, and it's in Mark, that talks about the man who brought his son, and he wanted Jesus to heal him. Because he had, uh, you know, he would fall down and, and thrash around and gnash his teeth and so on and so forth. And he wanted God to heal his son. And he said, Jesus, if you will, I've already been to these other guys, your disciples, I, you know, they couldn't seem to do this for me. And so there was a seed of doubt in the father's heart and in his mind. What, what did Jesus say? He said, if you believe, all things are possible. And the father's reply was this. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. So if you're out there and you have a need, but you're not quite sure or you have any doubt at all, make your first prayer, God, I believe, but help my unbelief. Because the result of that was God healed his son. It was possible. It happened. But the first thing he had to do was ask for help believing. So if you're out there, still people out there, and I know there are, who have a need, but you've been a little bit discouraged, you haven't gotten an answer, and you need an answer, first thing I want you to do is stand up and say, God, help my unbelief. Because a lot of us fall into that category. 
it's pretty common. So can you do that? Anybody? Anybody have that? Okay. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pray real quick, and we're going to ask God to help your unbelief. And once we've done that, that should give you 100% assurance that what your need is is going to be met today. Do we agree on that? Okay, let's pray. Father, we come to you today believing that all things are possible in your name. And for those of us who have an issue with fully 100% believing, we ask that you would, at this point in time, right now, reach down, touch our hearts, and give us that 100% assurance that the need we have will be met. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, would you guys come on down and join these up here? Okay, there's not anybody here that does not have 100% assurance in their heart that God is going to meet your need. Am I right? Okay, so what I'd like for you to do is just the people right around you, would you kind of group up and pray for one another? And I'll lead you in prayer, but I want you guys who are all 100% assured that you're going to get an answer are praying for each other. Pray for their needs, and they in turn pray for your needs, okay? And we'll do this for just a few minutes, and then I'm going to pray for you, okay? Father, as we stand here today, we have an assurance in you that you work miracles. You give us the desires of our heart. Lord, there are needs here, physical needs, spiritual needs, all kinds of needs but there's not one of them that you can't handle. And as we pray for one another, you hear those prayers. Lord, show us miracles today because every time we see a miracle, it strengthens us and we believe even more in your power. Lord, we love you. And we want to be able to do your work. We need your strength, your guidance. And Lord, we need that testimony that we can give because you answered our prayers. You worked a miracle. Whatever it is, we pray that you would be with us today. Pray that there will be testimonies come from this group of the miracles that you're working. We thank you so much for caring for us. Continue to be with us. Bless this service. And as each one of these people go back and sit down where they were, pray that you would just assure them of what you've done in their life. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Okay. Now, as you go back to be seated, don't let, don't let that doubt come back because as you stood here, you were 100% sure that God was meeting your need. That hasn't changed. Okay? Thank you. Cause you're the name above all names Worthy of all praise Of all praise My heart will sing will How great is our God Would you sing that one more time? We give praise to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to be together with God's people. And uh, the Lord is, uh, Lord is amazing. Truly amazing. I uh, would like, uh, Bethany, if we're able to, are we able to pull up that video from last evening? Yeah, we've got some time, but I'll let you do that if you will. And uh, last evening, I just want to thank all of those that were involved at uh, the school auction. And we were thankful. Uh, EBC uh, opened up their building and allowed us to use it, which saved costs and also brought us inside instead of outside. And that was, a, that was a great blessing. I just want to thank everybody for those of you that have served and those of you that went and supported and uh, just uh, great things happening in and through the life and the ministry of our school. And uh, just want to encourage you just to continue to be in prayer uh, for our school um, as we, uh, boy, it's hard to believe that we're coming to the end of a school year, and uh, wow, and then going to be uh, moving into the new year before, before we know it. But uh, lots of things happening here, Valley Life Center. Um, I would like to invite all of the ladies to join us this next Saturday at the uh, Spring Garden Party. Uh, it will be taking place down in the Activity Center. Uh, lunch will be provided. It will really help us, though, if you pick up a ticket out at the information desk. If the tickets, then we're able to, you know, decide how much food do we need to have in preparation uh, for all of that. So if you haven't gotten your ticket, please do that. And uh, this, it's totally fine um, as far as for the younger women to come, the older women to come, our girls to come. Uh, it's, uh, anyways, we don't want you to come as we uh, celebrate God's goodness and we rejoice in the focus of new life. So um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. So please stop by the information desk uh, and get that if you would. Also, coming up this week, a full week, uh, but the school is going to be doing their program, Peter Pan. Yes. And it is quite something. Wow. Um, it is amazing with all of the special effects and everything that they're doing. You don't want to miss this. And uh, I would just encourage you, there's information in your bulletin, uh, but come and be a part. Probably some of your better times to come and see it might be when the school is actually viewing it for the first time, or uh, there's a matinee that is in the morning on Friday, uh, and then there will be one in the evening, but typically in the evening, it's totally packed out and standing room only. So um, you're welcome to come and join us for that, but you may be standing, so just let you know. Uh, it's going to be a great, great time together. Also, I want to inform you, National Day of Prayer is coming up this Thursday, and we are meeting down at the courthouse at noon to pray uh, again for our nation. And so if you would like to be a part of that, we'd encourage you to come and to join us. Um, God, is, God is good. God is good. Do you have that ready? 
Let's go ahead and let's just play it. The church took us on, and then it was like, oh, not only do we allow you to use our facility, but we want to support you in every way. We want to take care of you. I think with love, it's a, it can come naturally, but it also can be a choice. And when we first came to uh, Valley Life, we were loved and it has been an easy choice to want to love back and so i think that that love coming together is um, really special it's important to me that that there would be a church that would want faith christian school to 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 be that covering over us to keep us safe so i never feel like um, as the principal of faith christian school that it falls on my shoulders. Now I kind of feel like it falls on your shoulders. It's been God's hand in all of it where you guys loved us and then we've been easily able to love you guys back. It's important to me that we're now considered part of your ministry and you make it so easy. Um, Valley Life makes it easy because they just like us. We love the school. It's such a privilege to have Faith Christian here on campus at Valley Life Center. It is amazing. Every day you walk through the hallways, you see people coming onto the property, and there's life. There's life change that's taking place. Uh, it is our joy and our privilege again to come together under the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ and see Him do amazing things. Valley Life Center and Faith Christian School have merged and come together in unity. We're dreaming and we're anticipating great things for the future. There are still conversations about a high school. Uh, this past year we uh, received our accreditation and excited about that and continuing just to move forward in our planning and even in our vision and direction for how can we maximize this property, how can we maximize our facility um, to be able to teach and train and disciple more students, uh, to be able to minister to the people of this community in a variety of different ways. We have done a lot of dreaming. Probably 10 years ago, we didn't do very much dreaming about expanding or what would we like. So now, all of a sudden, it's, what, what, what do you think? What, what would you like in five years? What do you think the school's gonna look like in 10 years or in 20 years? How many kids do you think there'll be a high school? Uh, do you want a gym? And so now, it's exciting to be able to, to dream about the future and plan for the future. Here we are in our third year, Faith Christian School, Valley Life Center, and we continue to grow closer and closer together, recognizing that we can do more together, united as one, than we can do separately by ourselves. Uh, what a joy it has been, uh, again, to uh, see our teachers and our students, our administration and staff, uh, all coming together, recognizing that love has to be our priority. We need to love the Lord with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, but we also need to love our neighbor as ourselves. And as we align ourselves to that scripture, we will be one. We'll be one with God and one with one another. And the result of that will be glory to the Lord. We have been privileged in the three years that we've been together with Faith Christian School uh, to have incredible leadership. What a gift God's given us in Michelle Stein as our principal. And the transition here has been so smooth. Um, we have become family, and but we're moving into a new season of, of change. And uh, when Michelle first mentioned to me uh, that it, it was time uh, for her to retire, um, I was thinking, wow, wow. 
who can play, who can replace Michelle? What a great job she has done. And we do thank her for everything that she's done, but God's provided. And we're excited to announce uh, that Beth Stein is going to be uh, moving into that principal position, fully capable, fully qualified, and what a beautiful and easy transition this will be. The first year uh, that I attended the Faith Christian School auction, uh, I was overwhelmed by the generosity of the people that were there, uh, people that were a part of the school currently, and then people part of the school even in its history. It was a beautiful thing uh, to be able to see how people came and were so generous. It is amazing, it is amazing how God, through people like you, uh, has made a huge difference and uh, we continue to be able to provide scholarships with the focus in the heart of anybody that wants to come to Faith Christian School. If, the, if it's money that's keeping them away, we want to be able to come alongside them and help them. And again, all with our heart being to teach and to train children in the ways they should go. To help children grow up with a biblical worldview that they might make a difference for Christ in the future. Thank you. Appreciate that. Praise God. Great opportunities, and there are more. You can view more of that video online. There's a testimony that follows of a family that has been blessed, and, and just because of people's generosity, have been able to be a part of the FCS program. And uh, uh, it's just, it's beautiful. Beautiful. I love to reflect on the testimonies of Christ. Amen. Amen. Can we have the house lights up this morning? Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to let the children this morning be dismissed for Children's Church. And as they are leaving, if our ushers want to prepare and come forward this morning, we're going to wait on you for a morning tithe and offering. They're so excited. Yay! Praise God. Father, we thank you so much uh, for all that you have done for us. Lord, we're so thankful for all of your precious promises and your precious gifts. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of eternal life, the gift of salvation and eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And we're so thankful, Lord, that you walk with us and you talk with us and you remind us daily, Lord, that we are your very own and Lord, we're also privileged to be able to join you in your work. Lord, as we endeavor, Lord, to reach out to this community and around the world with the good news of Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would pour into, Lord, our laps just the resources, Lord, that are needed for us, Lord, to accomplish your will for Valley Life Center. God, we, we look to you and recognize that all that we have, Lord, every good and perfect gift, every blessing, Lord, is from above. So, Lord, we say yes to you as we worship you now, Lord, with the tithe and the offerings. We give you thanks and praise. Let your blessing be upon your church in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you worship the Lord this morning. As we're receiving morning tithe and offering, if you'd like to take your Bibles and please turn to the book of Ephesians, book of Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians 1, thank you Jesus. I want to encourage you, would you please be praying for the Molinari family and would you please be praying for John Jones and family and again as uh, loved ones are with the Lord, how many of you know encouragement and comfort is necessary for the family, right? And body of Christ. So please continue just to reach out and to love on and to pray for uh, these. Thank you for that in Jesus' name. How many of you know that God is all powerful? He is all powerful. It was the food at the auction last night. That's the problem. No. God is all powerful. Oh, and an amazing God you and I serve. And, uh, you know, oftentimes as we live life, sometimes we just get caught up with what is in the natural, and we forget how privileged we are to be the very children of God. 
We are a privileged people, and we have a great inheritance in the Lord. I would like to, as you have turned to Ephesians chapter 1, I'd like to begin by reading some scripture together. Uh, again, just laying a foundation for us this morning. Luke chapter 9 and verse 1, if you can see, would you read along with me? When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. The power of God. Let's look at the next verse of Scripture. It's coming there. Luke 4.36. Read together with me. All the people were amazed and said to each other, What words these are! With authority and power he gives orders to impure spirits and they come out. They obey the power of God. Colossians 2, 9 and 10. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. Who is the head? Jesus is, absolutely. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4.20, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power, but of power. That is my last one, I think, that I have there. I want to remind you of some other words that we read in the Scripture that come from Jesus, and, and these are very important words. They're powerful words. They remind us again of the greatness of who our God is. When Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Powerful, my friends. How many of you know, again, God is all-powerful. He is able to overcome anything, my friends, in this world just with a, with a spoken word. God is amazing. But I want to remind you of something. In Christ, you and I can do amazing things. John says in 1 John 4, 4, to the believers in Christ, he writes, you are of God and you belong to him and have already overcome. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Then the verse continues and says, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Nobody is greater, my friends, than the Lord our God. Jesus is greater. Jesus is higher. And I want to remind you this morning that Jesus' power is greater than the power of the enemy. Amen. Amen. And see, we have to go back to the basics this morning. <laughs> Jesus' power is greater than the power of the enemy. Thank you, Gary. Jesus' power is greater than the power of the enemy. You know, my friends, we're not living in a, a dream and an imagination in this world of something like we watch on TV where we see these battles and sometimes one's victorious and the other's victorious. I want you to know that all power and authority is Jesus. It's been given to him by the Father. And I want you to know he is all powerful. And again, Jesus' power is greater than the power of the enemy. But you and I, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are supposed to be walking in that authority and power, right? The authority and power that we find in the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I are to be exercising Christ's power and his authority here on earth. And the truth is this. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ should be making a noticeable difference in the world that we live. Because of our own strength and power? No. Because Christ lives within us and he has all authority and all power. He is higher. He is greater. His power, again, he's all powerful and he is greater than the power. His power is greater than the power of the enemy. You and I have been called as his disciples to continue his work. He made it very clear in the scripture. Jesus said that he had come to destroy the works of the enemy. And how many of you know he's done that, right? Yes, he has come and he's brought freedom and liberty to you and me. But he's called you and I as the church to continue his work. Until he comes, we are to be busy about proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. We are to be 
we are to be busy about proclaiming that there is freedom in Jesus' name, that there is a power available to change and transform lives. Church life, my friends, should be characterized by power. You remember the scripture that we read, again, that, that focused that, that the reality, my friend, of you and I coming together, you and I and, and our focus with the Lord, we're not to be living in a place of, of timidity. We're not supposed to be living with cowardice or living with fear. But instead, the scripture says to us that you and I have been given a spirit of power and love and sound judgment and personal discipline. Scripture goes on. So do not be ashamed to testify about the Lord. Lord, do not be ashamed to continue to preach regardless of your circumstances. Can you tell this is the Amplified Bible? Just love it, man, all the details. Do not be ashamed to, again, regardless of your circumstances, in accordance with the power of God, for His power is invincible. Invincible. That is an incredibly powerful word that Paul brings to Timothy and to you and to me. We should be a church that's living not just with words, but a church that's living in power. It should be one of the things that the world recognizes. Scripture says that they will know we are God's children, what, by our love, our love for one another. But I want you to also know another identifying mark, another fruit that should be coming forth from the life of the believer is the power and the authority of Christ to change things. To free people, to see people that are bound and people that are lost, people that are hurting and in pain, to see them whole and to see them delivered. Power. I want to talk this morning for just a few moments about power and about authority. Power. Ephesians chapter 1. If you'll follow along with me, and you'll, I apologize, I am reading out of the Amplified. I just love all of the descriptive words that are in here. Um, but so follow along, if you will. I'm going to read at verse 18. And the scripture says, And I pray, again, Paul's writing to the church in Ephesus, right? He's writing to the church. And I pray that the eyes of your heart, the very center and core of your being, may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit, so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And so that you will begin to know Listen here, what the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his active spiritual power is in us who believe. Listen to that one more time. So that you will know what the immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness of his power is in us who believe. These are in accordance with the working of his mighty strength, his mighty power, which he produced in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, whether angelic or human, and far above every name that is named, above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and world, but also in the one to come. Wow. Verse 19 to me is so powerful. Paul, again, speaking to the church, speaking to you and to me, and reminding us again that, that you and I have need. It's important that you and I understand the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of the power of God that is in us. The call that's placed upon your life and mine as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is a call to live as Jesus has lived. It's a call to do the works of Jesus. You will remember that Jesus said several times before his ascension that they were, don't worry about me, I don't hurt or anything, I just sound funny, so, so don't worry about that. But Jesus told his disciples many times that they were to do what? They were to go to all the world and share the good news. The good news of Jesus Christ. 
And again, here's this instruction that they're given. Go, preach, make disciples of all nations. And you remember the scripture said, the promise was that as they would go forth and do that, that there would be signs and wonders that would accompany, again, the preaching of the gospel, the preaching of the good news of Jesus Christ, that God would confirm his word. Jesus said in scripture, Whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do. Because I'm going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. And again, I say to you and to me, we are called to carry on the ministry of Jesus in the earth. We are called to be an extension, to be ambassadors. In fact, my friends, you remember these words that Jesus said? He said, as the Father has sent me into the world, so I send you. So I send you. And we see as we look at the book of Acts, we see it play, we see it play out in the life of believers, right? We see people who move in the authority and the power of Jesus Christ to turn their world upside down. And that's not a negative turn their world upside down. That's a good turn their world upside down. How many of you know our world needs to be turned upside down? Amen. This city that we live in, this community, this valley needs to be turned upside down. Or maybe we should say they need to be turned right side up, one or the other. God has called you and I to be a church, to be a people with power who make a difference, whose lives and impact is great on the world round about us. So in verse 19, Paul brings again those words to us. I pray that you will understand the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of God's power in you. Oh, church. I believe with all of my heart that God wants you and I to have increased understanding and greater revelation to the greatness, the surpassing greatness of our God and his power to change lives. Change lives. The power of God to change lives. Do you know what he says here in the book of Ephesians? Did you know it when we were reading through there? So this, this power that is within you, this is the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. It dwells in you. It dwells in resurrection power. The truth is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ today, you and I need a greater revelation, a greater understanding of God's surpassing greatness. And the church said, Amen. Oh, that was not good enough. And the church said, amen. 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 And amen. Wow. Prayer and authority. In the King James Version, a lot of times you will see prayer, I mean, stop prayer, power and authority translated as power. But there are actually two distinct words. Power and authority actually in the Greek have two different meanings. And you'll notice in like the translation that I was reading in many of your translations, you will see power and authority. I want you to understand they're not exactly the same thing. It's, it's, it's something different. There's, their, their meaning is slightly different. Power, my friends, power is dunamis. How many of you know we're talking about like dynamic power here, right? The power of God. That kind of power that we're talking about is the strength or the ability or the force that's needed to rule or to act. I'll say it one more time. It's the strength, the ability, or the force that's needed to rule or to act. But authority is different. Authority is the right to rule or to act. See, now when we talk about Jesus, right? King of kings and Lord of lords. When we talk about Jesus, I've been given all authority, all power, right? What are we talking about? He has the right, right? 
He's the authority. How many of you know God is the ultimate authority? He lacks no power and he lacks no rule. He is sovereign. Right? But he's also all powerful. And he lacks nothing. But I want you to think about the importance of authority and the importance of power. Authority without power is meaningless. If you don't have the power to act or the power to do, it doesn't really matter what authority you have, right? So when Jesus talked to his disciples, when he sent them forth, I give you power and authority to, when he speaks to his disciples and he says to them, I have all power and all authority, therefore go make disciples of all nations. He is giving us the right to go, the authority, right? To act on his behalf, right? And he is also giving us power. There is also power available. How many of you know we can't fulfill the Great Commission on our own strength? Isn't that why we find the provision we read about in the book of Acts, Acts 1.8? When we read the words of the scripture that tell us that, that the disciples, that they needed to wait in Jerusalem until they were endued with power from on high. And they would receive this power and they would be Jesus' witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. Jesus was commissioning and giving his followers, his disciples, authority, right, under his leadership, and giving them power to accomplish the work and the mission of the church. Again, I would say to you and I would say to, to me, as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, our message must just not be one of words, but it should be one of power. As we go forth, God bearing witness that what we speak and what we share, again, is true. It is from God. God. God the Father has given Jesus all authority in heaven and on earth. The Bible tells us that. I love a, excuse me, a song that we used to sing, The Lord Omnipotent Reigneth. That's the picture of our amazing God, right? All-powerful. King of kings. The Lord of lords. It's important for you and I to understand that through the cross and through the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, he overcame what stood in our way. He overcame sin. He overcame death for you and for me. You see, before we were lost in our trespasses and sin, there was nothing that we could do to save ourselves. So Jesus came. He overcame sin for you and me. He overcame death for you and me. He made it possible that you and I could become the very children of God. And then he called and commissioned us to go forth in Jesus' name. But my friends, when, yes, the enemy was defeated at the cross and through the resurrection, no question there. But how many of you know the enemy still exercises power in this world? He's not all-powerful, right? His power is limited. God is the only one who's all-powerful, correct? But at the cross and through the resurrection, his authority was taken and stripped when God made a way for us to be free from the darkness and brought into the light. Listen to this in Colossians 1.13. Jesus has rescued us from the dominion, the authority of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. Wow. That's beautiful. But we need to understand that the cross, one of these days, all evil, whew, redem full redemption is going to take place, right? And we don't have to worry about one of these days, we're not going to have to worry about Satan. We're not going to have to worry about evil, right? And that day's coming really soon. Believe me, it's coming very soon. 
But you and I were freed by the power of Jesus Christ. And not only was Jesus again given by the Father uh, authority and power, but he speaks to his followers and the disciples and says, continue doing the works of Jesus. Well, how is that possible? Because I'm extending my authority to you and power. You can go doing things, things that you could not do on your own, you will be able to do Because who? Because of Jesus. Because of his authority in all heaven and earth. Because of his power. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of the son he loves. You and I have been delivered. You and I have freely received. That we might freely give. That we might bless. That we might do greater works than these. My friends, the truth is this, as Christians, sometimes we can live our life as if there is no enemy, right? And that he has no power. But I want you to know the enemy is still seeking whom he may devour. He's still looking to rob and to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I want you to know Jesus' power is greater. And you and I have been given authority in Jesus' name to go forth and see victory come about. Not only in our own life and circumstances, but in the lives of others. Power and authority. The thief comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. I have come that you might have life, Jesus said, and that you might have it to the full. That you might have it to the full. You see, my friends, as Jesus' followers, then it becomes our focus as we live for Jesus, right? So we recognize his authority, his power, and as we recognize that his power lives within us, then it becomes our responsibility to live our lives according to God's word, according to his will, empowered by the spirit of God, bringing liberty and freedom, bringing liberty and freedom and salvation to those that are around us. In Luke 10, 19, You remember these words, Jesus speaking to his disciples, Behold, I give you authority. I give you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power, dunamis, of the enemy, and nothing shall injure you. Nothing shall injure you. You see here in this passage of Scripture, remember we were talking about these two words, power and authority. There's the power, which is the dunamis, but I want you to know the other word, and I'll try to say the other Greek word correctly, exosia, exosia. It is speaking about authority. We're giving the right, the authority in Jesus' name to cast out, to overcome, to close doors, to open doors. I love the scripture, you know, when the scripture talked about in the gates of hell shall not, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Then it moves right into the next passage that you and I as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, we are able to bind things and we're able to loose things. Why? Because Jesus is all authority and all power and his spirit lives in you and me. He calls us, he commissions us. He empowers us. Wow. In Jesus' name, my friends, you and I can overcome the works of the devil. Now, I don't think it's wisdom for the church to run out and look for a devil under every rock. But I do think many times we swing the pendulum too far the other direction. And we forget that there is an enemy who desires to beset the church, right? The enemy would just love it if we're just a church of words but not a church of power. Right? We need to understand that we can stand and we can pray and we can believe and we can speak with his authority and with his power. Incredible things can happen. I don't know about you, but, you know, the person we'd meet on the street, and I notice in our community we've got a a lot of new people, interesting people that we have not seen or we haven't experienced before maybe in our community. Did you know Jesus loves all those people? 
And did you also know that there are a lot of those people that are bound and they need to find freedom in Jesus Christ? And did you know that as we go forth with the good news of Jesus Christ, that God's promise is, as we share that good news, that the power of God is going to be displayed? There's nothing I could do to change any of their lives. But God in me, Jesus through me, lives can be changed and transformed. I believe with all of my heart, there are going to be people in large number who are going to start filtering into our churches through the ministry and impact of the church that's decided it's going to go forth again and share the good news of Jesus Christ, but also recognize as we are under his authority and as his power is manifest in and through our lives, that as we go forth, that those people are going to find Christ and they're going to need families like you and me. But the transformation doesn't take place because we've done something in our own power. The transformation takes place because we walk in obedience to God. As we walk in obedience to the Lord, God flows in and through our lives to glorify his name. Let me read this for you again. Matthew 16, 19, Jesus said, I give you the keys. I give you the authority of the kingdom of heaven. What you bind, what you forbid, what you declare to be improper and unlawful on earth will have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose, you permit, you declare lawfully on earth will have already been loosed in heaven. There's an old song of the church we used to sing way back when. And when this came to mind this week and I was thinking about it, I thought, wow, what other song do we sing that, that really declares this? Do you remember when we sing, we've got the power in the name of Jesus, we've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, we will not be defeated. Why? Because all authority and power is his. And he has delegated that authority and power to us to go out and do the works of Jesus. And do the works that Jesus did. All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. And then Jesus said to his disciples, so go. So go. Get out there. Go. Go. Tell. Preach. Disciple. Go into all the world. Exercise my authority and power. Allow my name to be glorified. You know, my friends, as we go forth in the authority of the Lord, the power of God will be manifested in and through our lives. And you know what you and I will do? Our response will be the same as those that Jesus said, I give you all, I give you what? Authority. I give you power to go do this. What happens? You and I go out. We do what Jesus tells us. We exercise the authority that we've been given in Jesus' name. <laughs> lives are transformed. Well, even the demons obey us. Jesus, can you believe it? I didn't know I could... I didn't know that I could lead somebody to the Lord. Ah, I'll tell you, oh, excuse me, shouldn't have done that. <clears throat> I'll tell you this. There is nothing greater than being able to talk with someone and lead them into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, people talk about highs or whatever else. That's the greatest high I've ever experienced. Once you taste and you see, and you see God's transforming power in a life, there just isn't anything else that satisfies. It's like, okay, where's the next one, right? You know, let's go. God changing lives. Oh my goodness. One thing I want to mention where I think sometimes we can get messed up and then we'll be done. Power and authority. I think sometimes we get messed up and we forget that we are under authority. Have you ever been in a place where you've struggled and your question maybe has been, okay, God, what? How come I'm not seeing the power of God? 
Lord, I'm praying, I'm believing, I'm cast out. Why am I not seeing the power of God? I want to remind you that when we follow the... Jesus exampled everything for us, right? Jesus ministered in the power of the Holy Spirit. Scripture is very clear about that. You and I need to be ministering the power of the Holy Spirit. But the Scripture tells us that Jesus didn't say or do anything without the Father. They were in, in, there was a communion, there was a, there was a fellowship there. Jesus surrendered himself to the Father's authority. And what I want to say to us as a church, my friends, is that sometimes the reason as believers or as a church that we're not exp we're experiencing the word but maybe not the power, some of it could be because we have come out from underneath the authority of Christ in our life. And you say, well, what does that look like, Pastor? It can look a number of different ways. Let me ask you a question. Are all the kingdoms of your heart surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ? It's kind of like this, this same principle. If, if we move into a place of, it's like we can do whatever we want to do. We can do it all on our own. We'll do it all in our own strength and power. I'm really only submitted to myself. I'm only going to do what I really want to do, not what Jesus has told me to do or commanded me to do. Sometimes the places where we get tripped up and where we don't experience the fullness of the power of God flowing in and through our lives and the things is because we're not totally sold out and surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's not the case with every situation. There's some other things I'll share with you in the coming, coming weeks. But sometimes we've set ourselves up on that throne when Jesus should be the only one that's in that place. We've forgotten about, we've, we've claimed Jesus as our Savior, but we haven't claimed Jesus as our Lord. And sometimes we can find ourselves beset. Sometimes we can find ourselves lacking or even doubting and questioning really our place or our identity or even the power of God within us simply because we've lost sight of his place and our place. He is master. He is Lord. Right? And we are willing and loving servants of the most high God. The one who has all authority and all power. All power. Wow. Authority. Authority has to do with our position in Christ. Say it again. Authority has to do with our position in Christ. Power has to do with our posture in Christ. position I'm a son I'm a servant of the most high God I'm a child of the king and I have a heavenly father and as Jesus did I will submit to his will for my life to his word and in and out of that position I can exercise authority because I know, I know what my Father's will is. I'm confident in His Word. I hear the voice of His Spirit. Power, when we, go, when we talk about power, my friends, and we talk about posture, you know what? One of the best things we can do as a church, if we really want to move into the place of experiencing God's power and, and great manifestation and things of that nature, we need to press in personally seeking the Lord's face. We need to posture ourselves in prayer. Right? You know, we want to go and turn the world upside down. How many of you know prayer's got to be a big part of that? 
What happens when we pray? What happens when we, we seek the Lord when we come before him? Not only does he give us direction, not does, only does he fill us and empower us and overflow out of us to accomplish his will, but also, Lord, also, there's a confidence and a faith that's built in our hearts and lives in keeping with what he desires to accomplish in and through us. I got to stop because I, I feel myself going into the whole next week. I can't do that. You don't want to miss next week, though. It's, it's going to get personal. <laughs> no. no, it's going to be fun. We are going to talk about a few more things that I believe become the hindrance for us to really walk confidently in his authority and his power. But could it be this morning, just in our examination of our hearts, could it be this morning that maybe we're not finding ourselves in the place that we desire to be, the church isn't in the place it desires to be? Could it be because there are areas in our own hearts and lives that we have not truly surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? See, are we walking under the full authority of God? Does God have the final word does he have the final say in your life? I think that's something the church needs to reckon. And in light of the day that we're living in, the opportunities that are abundant all around us, we need to remember who he is. And we need to remember our place. Yes, God loves us. No question. Yes, he's done incredible things for us. He also wants to do incredible things through us, and he's called us to take it to the street, to take it to the world. And as we walk in obedience, and as we are under his authority, as we exercise that authority, the power of God will manifest, God will be glorified, and lives will be changed. Cool, right? Cool. Would you stand? Praise God. Can we just bow our heads just a moment? Would you just before the Lord? You know, I just, I love the scripture that talks about searching our heart. You know, God's invitation is to us. Come and follow me going to make you fishers of men. Maybe right now in his presence you need to just renew that call. God, here I, here I am. Lord, would you strengthen me? Lord, maybe there's examining your own heart and life. God's brought something to you. And it's like, okay, you, you are not walking in obedience or you are not submissive or submitted to me as your, as your Lord in this area or in that area. All Jesus is looking for you and me is just to say, okay, God, here it is. Lord, I'm giving you my pride. Lord, I haven't been faithful to you. Lord, I haven't walked honestly in business. I've been doing my own thing, making my own decisions, and I know I've been contrary to your word. Father, we just right now, Lord, we just pray, God, would you remove, would you remove, Lord, anything in our lives that is or would be keeping us Lord, from being effective in the harvest? Would you remove anything, Lord, in our lives that's hindering us and keeping us from knowing true freedom. Jesus. 
Lord, would you forgive us? And Lord, would you help us to forgive others? I believe in my heart, Lord, this morning there's somebody here that's in this room. And Lord, the, the reason that they're not experiencing the victory of God in their life and in their circumstances is simply because they're not willing to forgive. Lord, I pray for a liberation in their life. I cry out to you, God, and I say, help. Help us. Help them. Lord, this week, would you speak to us? Would you just show us, Lord? Show us your way. Show us your will. Lord, show us. Expose in our own hearts, Lord Jesus, those things that, Lord, maybe you're wanting to adjust or change or areas that we just need to completely surrender. And Lord, I pray that every day we would look to you and we would thank you for all that you have overcome and all that you have made possible in our lives because of Jesus' sacrifice. But I also pray, Lord, that our hearts would grow and increase with the burden to go forth and to share the good news with authority and with power and with great impact and effect. God, we can't do this on our own. We thank you that all authority is yours, all power is yours. And we submit to your lordship and say, God, use us. Use us. Father, right now I pray for our prodigals. Lord, I pray for our prodigals. We pray for our prodigals. We pray for those, Lord, that have strayed, those that have walked away. Lord, even people that have been apart, Lord, and, and done great things for you, Lord, maybe even in the past, but because of pain or hurt, they've stepped back or they've just isolated. Lord, we pray for a return. We pray for a return to the church. God, I pray not only would they hear the word and remember the word, but I pray, Lord, that the power of God would be displayed. Lord, that there would be a confirmation that would come forth in their lives that you are the one true God. That you truly love and you forgive and you make all things new. Bring our prodigals home, Lord. Bring them home. Be glorified in your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you sing, God is so good. God is so good. Nobody greater. God is so good. He's so good to How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Yay! Yay! Praise God. Let's press in to seek Him. Let's change our world. Let's turn it right side up, right? In Jesus' name. God bless you. If you need prayer, our intercessors will be down here. Pastors here to pray with you. Let's go with the Lord. Continue to love one another. Amen. Jesus, and you are
way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you